right, so the next test we're going to talk about is uh, the 5105. So the 5105 is our change of direction test. Um, it's looking at our agility to a certain extent, but really our ability to get in and out of cuts. Um, kind of tying back to some of the things we already talked about. Obviously, we've worked on our sprinting a little bit. We've worked on our endurance, but the, a big misconception is that soccer is a game of forward and backward. We need to be able to go diagonal. We need to be able to go side to side. We need to be able to open up and change directions here. So we need to be able to cut, plant, move. We need to be able to cross over. We need to be able to drop step. All these different movements tie into uh, the demands that we need for the, for the game of soccer here. Um, so it's very important that we're addressing these both within a training session as, as well as with some exercise that we can be doing to support and supplement what we're already getting within um, some of those games and drills that we're doing within our, within our training here. So um, once again, we're gonna talk about four drills that we can do part of our warm-up, um, things that we can do at home just to help us um, clean up some of those um, stability demands, balance demands now that we're gonna we're gonna find with uh, our changing change of direction type type moving patterns here. Um, so if you recall the 5105 really required us to basically run five yards one way, ten yards another, and then sprint back through five yards. So really what we were looking at is their ability to change off of their left leg, off of their right leg, um, and link it back to then some sprinting mechanics. So um, we, we got a sense of how, how they are on their left leg and right leg. So naturally, if I'm right footed and I'm passing and I'm shooting, I'm gonna already get naturally a lot of work on my left leg. But in, in reality, my left leg is gonna be my stronger leg. It's gonna be more, my more stable and balanced leg. We gotta make sure that we address both legs though. Because once again, I don't know necessarily which way I'm gonna be cutting and changing direction. I don't know when those situations are gonna present themselves where I might have to use that, that non-dominant foot in a sense. So it's very important from a performance standpoint, but it's also very important from an injury prevention standpoint that we're addressing both legs here, that we're making sure that we're giving both legs um, some of that strength, single leg balance support, stability type exercises, just to make sure that we are strong and stable uh, on both sides for when we need to use it on, on the pitch here. So the first drill we're going to look at, in a sense, is a deceleration drill. Um, it's looking at our ability to kind of slow our bodies down. Obviously, when we're going into a cut, we're running pretty fast, all of a sudden we have to cut and change direction. We need to be able to slow our bodies down. So this first drill is called a drop squat. There's two different ways that we're, we can do it. We can do it a double leg or we can do it a single leg. The first natural progression is just go double leg. So you're just gonna start nice and tall. You can clap, you can just kind of react, but really how quickly can you now drop down into that athletic base position? As I drop down into my base, knees are pretty much over top of those feet. My butt's down and back, I have a nice flat back. But can I control that drop? Can I get into that nice base position, weights fall on my foot without leaning too far one way or another without my knees collapsing in? All right, so we're starting tall. How quickly can I drop down, get into that base position? Now I'm in a position where if you ask me to go right, left, forward, backwards, diagonal, I'm gonna be able to react and go pretty quick. From there, now we can start to challenge ourselves and get down into single leg. So once again, as we go into a lot of cuts, we're cutting off our right, we're cutting off of our left. So we can kind of take that same principle, that same idea. We start tall, now can I drop down, find that base on one leg. We're working both sides again, so now maybe we alternate sides. Am I just as strong, just as balanced, just as stable? You know, the nice thing about a lot of single leg drills is that you're gonna get some pretty, pretty quick feedback right away. If I drop down on my right and I'm naturally doing this, whereas on my left, I'm here, I can pretty much know right away that, hey, I gotta work on this right leg a little bit more. Um, with these drills, both double leg and single leg, two to three rounds, 10 reps, um, start double leg, progress to single leg. Um, 